Hello and welcome to Dark Mouse's Daily Scroll, with me, Dark Mouse. Now, as you can tell, I'm already in a match, and the more astute amongst you will notice that I'm in a match against Pontus, who we've seen before. Now, I found it difficult to find a recordable quick or ranked match last time around, so Pontus graciously agreed to allow me to record a challenge match between us. So something a little bit different this time around, I'm playing against someone I've played against before, for one thing, and also playing against someone who I've played against quite a few times, so we know roughly what's in each other's decks which should make for a bit more of an interesting uh, match. So hopefully we are going to see some interesting stuff. So I started with the Copper Automat on and she has started with a Ragged Wolf. I'm going to say she because obviously the avatar is female and that's what I'm rolling, rolling with. So let's get rid of Bombard and bring out another Copper Automat on because I got lucky this time around and drew two one resource cards in my opening hand. That's brilliant. So, uh, early damage to the idol. Not bad, not quite first blood, but not quite too bad either. So the energy against a growth matchup is always quite interesting, because generally you have the growth saying, I have this out on the field, and this out on the field, and energy saying, no you don't. Generally you end up with just energy going, no you can't have that, no you can't have that. Cheap creatures, creatures that are, you know, able to attack quickly with uh, not much toughness. Sorry, no, you're not allowed that. So I think here, if I get rid of Burn and just Ember Bond that wolf, brilliant. Then I get rid of two creatures at once. And all of a sudden, once that countdown goes down to zero, uh, once the turn rolls over, the board will be clear again. <laughs> this is generally what you see between energy and growth, because growth is very good at quick starting and very good at just getting out cheap, low toughness creatures very very quickly and we've seen that happen before in games that have recorded uh, now energy is brilliant at just removing those creatures because of the low toughness things like sparks and burns will just get rid of them entirely which is kind of nice really because it generally means that uh, well it's a more tooth and nail fought type thing I mean there we go there's the dragon wolf gone and I have a Thunder Surge now, which isn't brilliant, I've only got three resources, but I can still play Gun Automaton, so I should be okay with that, so I'll just sack that for resources. Or cards, I'm sacking up cards. Ooh, ooh, good thing I did as well, an Automator Forge. Nice, and it goes there, I'll put it in the middle there, because that nicely covers me and I can be more flexible that way. I think the main reason why I've been seeing such a spate of horrifying losses recently is because I've been too inflexible with the way I play. A lot of people tend to play stuff down in the middle first off and I can see the sense in that because then you can respond to either side of your idols so if one side comes into fire from your opponent you can just respond quite quickly to the other side. So now he's got to see what uh, Pontus is going to do. Now Pontus does have a few more additions to uh, her deck since the last time I, I played against them uh, mainly the addition of Quick, which is ridiculously powerful. It's brilliant for just getting rid of or damaging everything on the board. I think it does 3 damage to structures and 2 damage to creatures. Generally, by the time you get to play it, you'll hopefully have already set up like a, a chain reaction type thing, where your creatures are too tough to die, but your opponents are just on that brink. And if they don't die from Quick, at the very least, your creatures have count on zero and just swoop in and kill them all. That's generally a cascade that's quite nice there. Okay, so reinforcing the central line with the Grave Hawk there. Not too bad. So get rid of the Cannon Automaton because I don't have any use for it right now. Let's move the Gun Automaton back and play down Prox Charges. And where am I defending? That makes my, my decision for me. I'm defending up top because generally what I find is easier if you can just ignore two of your idols entirely. Just ignore them. Don't pay attention to them. That's the way I tend to roll, and it sometimes works. It used to work quite a lot, and now either people are getting wise to it, or people are just getting a lot better than me a lot quicker. I'm. It's, it's either way. Either theory is really good, because I'm not brilliant at this, and I'll find out I'm not bad, but again, not brilliant. So there's an ether pump down. Ether pumps are really nasty against growth decks because if they survive long enough, <coughs> then uh, you can just start chewing away at the units all them at once. 
and it's brilliant against decks that just have a ton of structures that have only one resource in them. So now I'm starting to roll a little bit, I'm turtling up a tiny little bit, but not enough to do any major damage at this point in time. I've only got two creatures down, the rest are all structures. So if I get a Metal Heart, then I'm going to be doing six damage to an idol at once, or to a creature at once. That's the thing that I quite like, is Metal Hearts are really useful in that regard. If you get them, then uh, you, as long as you've got a lot of structures down, I mean, that's another reason why Prox Mines are brilliant. They're for resource, and if you can, if you've got enough resources to do it, if you can cast down two proximity mines, mine cards, which gets you four prox mines overall, and then play down a metal heart, you'll have plus four to attack straight away for ten mana overall, which isn't brilliant. But then you've also got down some nice dangerous prox mines that uh, your opponent then has to waste resources killing. Now. There we go, and there is a Kinsfolk Veteran. Now we're into difficult territory because I need to start sacking for cards rather than resources, and that's going to make my life a little bit more difficult. A Metal Heart right now isn't too useful. The Charge Coil of protecting my Automator Forge is, because I don't want the Automator Forge to die. That would be a bad idea. So I've done some damage to my opponent's idols. They've done not as much to mine, but that at this stage of the game doesn't mean squat. Your opponent can sit there hammering away at your idols and chip away two or three down to one health and it doesn't make a difference. The only the only difference that gets made is when is keeping your opponent's stuff off the board. That's something that I've not been doing is just keeping stuff off my opponent's side of the board. I mean there is a frost gale which got rid of my prox mines and did some damage to his stuff. Now I have some incendiaries which aren't useful to me at all. And I don't really have anything off, else off cooldown either. So I think getting rid of the incendiaries, because holding onto that metal heart is not a bad thing. So, and I get another Valent Dispersal. Okay, not too bad. Put a Charge Coil on there. So most of the structures in this deck, uh, it appears. Let's see. Nice, not too bad, not too bad at all. Well, that Charge Coil's dead. One of those two Charge Coils is dead unless Pointless decides to attack the Ether Pump, which, in all fairness, they might well do. Charge Coils are nasty, because if you let me rank up three of them, I'll be doing three damage cumulatively every single turn. Unless you Frost Gale it, or whatever it is, whatever the growth card is that increases the countdown of target units. That's a nasty card, particularly with when in, particularly against Charge Coils. Because with them able to fire off every single turn, it's a nice, consistent one damage to something. And it doesn't matter what it is, it's just something. It would be nice if they could do that to idols, because, you know, the same with the ether pumps and stuff. But that would make them really overpowered for three, three and four resources. But, uh, so we have another Sister of the Fox. Now, I feel sorry for Sisters of the Fox, because generally people tend to uh, play them down and then play down a fertile soil and just sack the, the Sister of the Fox, and she doesn't get to do anything, basically. Ge that's generally the way it works that I've seen. But yeah, that's a dead charge coil. So I've got the Ether Pump down, and let's get rid of the Metal Heart, I think, because there's nothing I can use for it. And I do have two Valent Dispersals. So that's gone by wise. And let's Valently Disperse that guy, because there's nothing. There's no way I'll be able to kill him otherwise, not at this point in time. So. That should hopefully be. Yes! Right, cool. The Ether Pump will finish it. That's another clear board in my favour this time around. Again, against growth it doesn't make squat, because if, if they've got enough creatures in the deck, they can just throw them out time and time again. I think the only... one of the most expensive growth creatures I've seen has been the Great Wolves and the Kinfolk Veterans, because they cost five resources each, and they are particularly nasty. Great Wolves get plus one attack for every wolf on the board, and they're relentless. <coughs> Sorry, for every wolf on the board, and they're relentless. Um, ooh, I have a clock library now. I don't need to worry about him for two more goals, but I might as well get rid of him quickly. Because this means now that, uh, again, clear board. If I can just keep uh, Ponders from getting the creatures on the board and keeping them on the board, all will be good. Of course, it also means that I have to be able to draw stuff, which is going to be a particular nightmare when it comes down to it. 
All right, I've got a clock library in my hand and a spark as well. I can use that spark to get rid of the sister of the wolf. Is it not? Yeah, sister of the fox, not sister of the wolf. Sorry, that's a brother of the wolf there. And down goes the clock library. Which is nice. In four turns, I'll have... I think it's three or four cards. I think it's three. But because it'll be my turn as well, it'll be uh, four, because I've got one for drawing. Which nicely refills my hand. I think I've used that before, actually, to be able to get up to... 10 cards in my hand, which is brilliant, really, because it means that you've got a lot of flexibility to play with, and then you can just start sacking for resources left, right and centre if you really want to. Now I'm in a bit of a stronger position here, but that doesn't really mean anything if, my, if Pontus has a ton of cheap creatures in the hand. Hopefully most of the cheap creatures have been cycled into the graveyard by now. Which means that my heavy duty removal won't be needed till later, and I can get some of my heavy hitters out, which would be nice. Now that's interesting. Dryadic power boosts their attack and stuff, but means they, they can't move. It reduces the move value by one, which is interesting. Generally, creatures only have a move value of one, which makes me wonder: Is Moyang working on a card which has a move value higher than one? Because if it does, then it's quite possible that we'll see cards that benefit hugely from Dryadic Powers, just to see what they do. Now, because that'll be quite cool, is just seeing a, a card that says it's got a move of two or three and just hopping it across the board to wherever the hell you need it. <coughs> It'll probably be relatively weak. But that's why the Dryadic Power would come into its own. You just play it down and it can't hop as far, but when it hits, it hits hard. Which is quite nice, because you can just build it up so it only moves you know, one tile, and then you can just obliterate anything on that row, basically. Give it a relentless with machination mindset. It would be a growth card, because it would ha well, it wouldn't have to be, but it would. I think it would suit it better. I can't imagine an energy creature loping across the board. Well, I've seen Solemn Giants at work, and they're pretty cool. So, let's see. I've got a Cannon Automaton, and that's a Stag Heart. That Cannon Automaton is dead. Just a little bit. Because... It armor 1, and attack of 5, and only health 4. Which means one very dead Cannon Automaton. But, I'm managing to keep Pontus on her toes. Which, provided I can get out a glut of creatures, will work nicely in my favour. So I've got a Concentrated Fire, which won't be enough to take out the idol. So I'm going to get rid of it for more cards. Ah, sweet. So Thunder Surge is useless, and Ether Pump, however, is not. So let's play that down. Yeah, let's put it there. Because then if he attacks, it'll just kill the front one. And the back one's on its uh, better cooldown. Alright, cool. So let's move that Gunner Tauton forward. And boom, there's two more damage to that idol. Brilliant. So I'm starting to just wear Pontus down very, very gradually and very slowly. And they've got eight resources. I think it's between six and eight resources for a quick. So I'm a bit. Sh there we go. As I say it, shaky territory there. There's a quick right off. Which is painful because now my ether pumps are ridiculously fragile. Uh, and I drew a spark. That'll get rid of that nicely, like quite nicely. Let's move that gun on top of forward, there we are, and just start taking down that uh, middle idol. That's one dead brother of the wolf. Let's get rid of that, and I can play down more stuff. Nice. And that, ca ah yes, that uh, clock library only has one turn left, and then I get more cards, which is kind of nice. Let's see what uh, Pontus' response to this is. I'm in a bit of a stickleback formation at the moment, where I can move my creatures to any other row, and uh, have something on every row, basically. Now hopefully, I won't see another quake, because that would ruin me right now, I think. That would get rid of pretty much everything I have. I don't... Uh, I don't know if... Pontus has more than one quirk. I think they do. 
but let's hope that uh, nothing stops the Autopator Forge from just rolling forwards. They've still got enough for another quirk if they want. Because it's six resources. So unless they have another quirk, there's no way they're going to take down my uh, clock library. Because there's no other removal really in growth. And there's another uh, brother, brother of the Wolf. Okay, cool. So I actually think I've seen most of Pontus' creatures now, which is a nice feeling. So let's see what I've got to do. So I've got the Copper Automatons going to obliterate that. And... So move that to there. And just lay down. We'll get rid of the tick bomb for one thing. I don't need it, there's no structures. I draw another tick bomb. Fair enough. But I now have a lot of cards in my hand, which is quite nice. I'll play the clock library down. And then I can get more cards in my hand, hopefully. Let's just reinforce the top there, which is quite nice. And I should be able to take out that middle idol. I hope. And hopefully, <laughs> two either pumps will destroy you, point to say. Let's hope so, because uh, two ether pumps is quite a nasty combination. Doing one damage every... I think I'm doing one damage for two rounds every two rounds, if you know what I mean. Alright, and there's work started on the bottom three. Sweet. So I'm starting to roll a little bit now, so as long as I don't see another quake come my way, I should be good. I'm starting to really turtle up. Well, not even turtling up. I'm just managing my removal better than I was before. Cool. So that's... I think that's the second Kinfolk Veteran we've seen. And that's the second Great Wolf we've seen. So... We should be most of the way through Pontus' creatures right now. So if I get rid of the tick pump for resources... Now I can put prox charges down. If I uh, if I move the gun automat on there because it's more use there anyway, then put a prox charge there and there. There's the cloak library. Definitely quite well defended, I think. And if we ember bond the great wolf, because that has the potential to be more powerful than anything else. Just need a couple of Ragged Wolves and a Mangy Wolf, because the Mangy Wolf will reduce its cooldown by 2 when it comes in, which is enough to set the Ragged, uh, Great Wolf coming off straight away. So Wolf decks have a lot of synergy, which is quite nice for them. But uh, hopefully I can hold on just long enough to be able to... Basically it's a case of just holding on at this point, because what I lack in creatures I make up for in removal power. What growth lacks in removal power, they make up with really hard hitting creatures that buff each other. Huh. So. Yeah, Pont I think Pontus is kind of giving up on the Ether Pumps now. I'm just kind of reinforcing them. The Nil Furnace, they've only got one health and two health left each. So a good Quake would kill them both. And probably my Ultimate Forge as well, actually. Because that should only be on two from the last Quake. I haven't seen my other automated forges, it's kind of weird. Ah, okay, fuck y'all. Okay, cool. So, still quite a lot more in the way of uh, creatures. But I think I've seen the most, the majority of the bad ones. So, what can I do? Uh, if I move that guy down to there... Not of my ether pumps are going off just yet, but if I spark... That druid... Okay, cool. So here's a good example of just how fun it is to use energy. Concentrate fire means my Grunt Automaton fires twice, and I've already sparked that Drain Burial Ground, so now it doesn't get to heal anything. Because being able to heal your own units in this is brilliant. It just means that you've got a lot in the way of power. Now, if Pondus lets those guys attack to get rid of the Prox Mines, they're going to die as well. And Ponders knows this. That tells me there's no Quake in this. There's no Quake in this hand right now. Because otherwise Ponders would play it. 
because it would get rid of uh, both the ether pumps, the automated forge, the prox mines, and it would do significant damage to the uh, clock library and would they'd be able to kill it off straight away basically. Ah, that's going to be kind of painful. Crimson Bull is really, really useful. It's kind of like Metal Heart, but on a grand scale. And it doesn't rely on the number of structures you have either. Let's get rid of the Gun Automaton for more stuff. I probably shouldn't have done that. I think my other problem is I tend to sack low-cost creatures late game for more cards if I need to refill my hand. I shouldn't have done that really, I should have played down another gun automaton, even if I'm getting another one out of the Automator Forge. I'm not doing too badly still, I've still got all my idols up, up intact, and I've still got a kind of defensive line. The clock library is going to become mine next turn, unless there's something important I can do to stop it. <coughs> so hopefully, this should turn out well. Now the Brother, the Brother of the Wolf, I'm actually kind of surprised Pointless hasn't just been spawning wolves. Because that spawns Ragged Wolves, which attack as soon as they arrive. Which is quite cool. Now, and that would also boost up the Great Wolf. Only the attack, not the defence. But the Great Wolf's relentless, and it can chew through an entire line if it's got a high enough attack. Now, okay, this is interesting. I have a feeling I'm going to lose my ether pumps and my useless contraption because growth is very good at just buffing its own stuff and if they've got another crimson bull in there I am not going to see much in the way of survival from my stuff a thunder surge right now but brilliant there we go crimson bull I figured as much ow there's my entire top line dead but I have a lot more cards now okay cool so if I get rid of the incendiaries, not for more cards. For resources, there we go. For resources, and now I can burn a couple of things. And... So I burn that guy. He got some prox charge, sweet. I might actually lay the prox charges down. Put them on there, and hope it's uh, now the wrong way. I should have really started it off further down, but I wanted to keep the Automator Forge uh, alive for a little bit longer if I could. And I know I've got another one, but the longer I can keep that one alive, the longer it's a defensive structure as, structure as well. So hopefully, this is going to be an interesting... See, swings and roundabouts. Just when you think you've got uh, a game nailed, and you've done quite a lot to your opponent's uh, idols, Notice the resource discrepancy. It's not that high. Usually I'm only on 6 right now, rather than 8. But Pointus is still in a brilliant position, with only 2 cards in the hand. Ow. <clears throat> you know what I said about um, growth lacking removal? Well, they only lack removal if your stuff has more than 1 health. Because Frost Gale deals 1 health, 1 damage to everything on that side. So... I'm in a lot of pain right now. This has been completely turned around. Um, uh, let's get rid of Concentrate Fire for more. <clears throat> let's see. I've got five resources. I can burn something. Which, I'm going to burn one of those guys. Metal Heart's not used to me right now, but the useless contraption is. I'm going to put an Automator Forge behind it. Now it's kind of... It's, it's gone from... Juggernauting and having a lot of uh, my gun automatons out, and my automator forge rolling, just rolling the automatons out, and the ether pumps, you know, doing one damage to everything around really, really nicely. It's kind of now just become uh, Pontus uh, rolls over that Dark Mouse. That's not, that's not too bad actually for a late game uh, set, of, set of cards. There's a dead totem. Idol. Not totem. Idol. That's a very dead, very dead idol. So now it's a case of I need to defend the top two. Actually, I need... Uh, no, I could just about do it if I just defend the bottom three like it happened. Now, fairness, I kind of need... Uh, 
A Thunder Surge here would be nice. Wouldn't do horrendous amounts of damage, but it would be nice. Because it would just well, strike everything down for a little while. So what do I have that I can play that won't get annihilated as soon as it arrives? Jeez. Uh, Alright, let's play down the North Metal Forge there. And I need to pump in front of it. That should be just enough to keep them both alive for long enough, hopefully. This is going to be very interesting, because now Pontus is in a position where she can play anything she likes. Absolutely anything. So, what are we going to see next? Uh, just to let you guys know, I will not, there will not be a scroll out on Sunday. I'm, kind of, I'm going to take that day off a little bit, I'll just get a few things done. I need to get some cleaning around the house done and promote everything else. Ow! So they died pretty quickly. Uh, that was a bad idea. But now I can play around the Ether Pump and the Cannon Automaton. And I'm probably kind of bored right now. So, ow, oh, why did I do that? Why? I don't think I saw the countdown of one on those two guys with five attack each. Because, yeah. Yeah, there's me, there's me realizing and going, oh shit, damn. So that I'm afraid is uh, kind of me dead. But uh, yeah, so there'll be no scroll on Sunday, I'm afraid. Um, but we'll be scrolling again on Monday as usual. That is GG. So that was the first challenge match that I've recorded and shown you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. So. That should get me enough gold to be able to um, get my new my next scroll. So let's see what it is. Leave much. Let's just close out the friends list for now and go straight to the store. What do I get? What do I get? Nice. I got a solemn giant. Finally. Alright guys, guys, that's enough for uh, now I think. I'll catch you guys later. Like, favorite, and subscribe to support the channel. Catch you later guys. Have fun.